Hi, I'm Hannah Wallace and welcome to Finextra TV. Kindly calling into our virtual studio today to talk about the metaverse is Sophia Bandaridas, City Future of Finance Analyst, uh, City Global Insights. So Sophia, thank you very much for joining us again. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, Hannah. It's been a while, but good to have you on. And we're speaking off the back of uh, UK FinTech Week, um, a really big one for us. And I know you spoke recently at Innovate Finance Global Summit about the metaverse, which is a topic I'm hoping to touch on more and more as we go along. But uh, let's kick things off and hear a bit about um, what it is. Let's start there and also why we should care about the metaverse. Yeah, thank you, Hannah. Those are two really good and really important questions and ones we have addressed in a report that we just published last week on money and the metaverse, which was also the topic of conversation at UK FinTech Week and, uh, and IFGS. So if anyone's listening and they would like a copy of that, type in city, metaverse and money and you'll see that. But to address your question directly, what it is, very difficult to answer succinctly because there is no set industry-wide agreed definition of what the metaverse is. Now, as a concept, it's actually been around for decades in sci-fi novels and in movies. And often, you know, a common reference point when we think about the metaverse um, is a book by Neil Stevenson, Snow Crash, where he coined the term. Um, but since then, we have heard competing visions about what the metaverse is. Based on its design, is it's going to be an open metaverse built on you know, blockchain and open protocols or a closed metaverse that is built by the big tech companies? So there are competing visions to add to the complexity that there is no set definition. But in our report, what we think of the metaverse as is um, the next iteration of the internet, supporting a whole range of real-time applications and experiences across devices, a shared, immersive, and persistent space, blending or combining, if you like, the physical and the digital world. So a broad definition, if you like. So I think that was answering your question, what is it? And then you also asked me, well, why should we care about it? Also a really good question, and I'm gonna answer that one in a couple of ways. Mm -hmm. Well, one way of looking at it is the really um, sort of spike in interest in the metaverse, particularly since November, following some announcements from big tech CEOs on their plans in this space. So the Google searches for the term were really at an all time high combined with the term really being used a lot in US um, company filings and earnings report. And both of these, all of these figures remain at all time highs. So that's if we just look at the numbers and what are people looking at searching for. So that's one, one thing. But more fundamentally, we should care about it if we care about society and if we care about the world we live in today and what, if we, and what it will look like in the future. Like I said in our definition, we see it as a future iteration of the internet. And if you take a step back and think about the impact the internet had on your life right now, I'm, the current iteration of it, the impact for me was huge. I wouldn't be doing this interview with you if it wasn't for the internet. I probably wouldn't have even found this job. So if we're talking about the future iteration of the internet, then that has a massive impact and that's something we care about. And it opens up really, it reopens up the debate and amplifies it for society to what degree we want technology to intervene in our daily lives. What does a healthy dose of the metaverse look like? To what degree are we going to experience things digitally that we currently experience in a physical world. So if you care about the world you live in today for yourself, your kids, your grandkids, what that's gonna look like in the future, you're gonna be interested in the metaverse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fascinating, fascinating. And sometimes uh, something that's quite mind boggling. So good to get some clarity there. Uh, thank you, Sophia. So uh, my next question then is how will we use it then? Yeah. That's another good question. I'll probably answer it in two parts. One, in terms of how we're actually going to access it. 
and two, in terms of the use cases, um, how we're going to access it? Well, through a range of different ways. You know, one of the misconceptions uh, we found is that the metaverse, you know, it can only be accessed using, you know, an AR or VR headset. Yes, that is one way, but that is not the only way. Um, one would be able to access it through, like my laptop that I'm using right now, or my PC, or my mobile phone, a whole bunch of different devices that could be used to access the metaverse. And in terms of the use cases, well, how long have we got? <laughs> the sky's the limit. Um, we, you'll see that we cover in the report a whole plethora of different use cases from sectors ranging from entertainment, media, healthcare, fashion, advertising, smart manufacturing, and we give all sorts of examples. So really the sky's the limit, but I think what connects the use cases is um, companies looking at perhaps doing things in a better and even more cheaper way through these immersive experiences, but also connecting to their target audience in a more engaging way and also reaching new audiences. Sure. Well, thank you very much for that. Very enlightening. And um, I think we're going to have to have a good look at that report to learn more. Uh, and I've touched on these a little bit already, but let's expand on them. The challenges and the opportunities involved in the metaverse. What about those? Yeah, I'll start with the challenges and then end on a positive note and on the opportunities. Um, there are many challenges. Um, there are regulatory challenges. You know, our laws that we have today, they weren't exactly drafted with the metaverse in mind. Of course, some things we have today still would apply, but they need an elevated and a more sophisticated response. We have all we already have some examples of regulators, you know, thinking about the word metaverse and touching it. But I think it's a space where we will see a lot more activity from the regulators in the future as the metaverse evolves. So that's one challenge. Another challenge is the actual technology that will be required for this to work really well, for it to be immersive, live, real time, you know, a social experience. You need thousand times of improvement in computing efficiency, high performing computer chips, network bandwidth, um, and really low levels of latency as well. All of these different things that need to come together. So the technology is going to be a challenge, but the opportunities, well, there are a lot of opportunities and we've tried to put some Figures on that. Now, being a bank, if we put out a report, I'm sure you can expect for it to contain some figures. So our figures are, of course, based on predictions, but the opportunities in terms of the total addressable market, uh, in terms of dollar value, but also in terms of the number of users that we think are going to be active in this space, we've projected out to 2030. And we think if we take this broad device agnostic definition of the metaverse, could be up to 5 billion users, which is a lot. It's mind boggling when you think about how many people are on the planet today and take that as a percentage. And if you take a narrower definition, coming back to the point that we discussed in your first question about how you define the metaverse. So in this narrower definition where you access it using AR and VR, of course, the user number is, is much smaller, could be 1 billion by 2030. That's in terms of total addressable market for users. Then the total addressable market in terms of the metaverse economy, how big is it going to be? And these are the figures that have made um, some headlines, um, eight to 13 trillion, again, on the based on the broad definition, and a far smaller number based on the narrower definition, you know, one to $2 trillion by 2030. So a lot of opportunity. Lots of opportunities and some impressive uh, figures there, Sophia. Thank you very much. And with every response uh, comes a million more questions, but we'll have to leave that for another time. So look forward uh, to reflecting on those predictions further down the line. Until then, uh, thank you very much and look forward to speaking soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Hannah.